We've got one minute. got one minute. <coughs> okay, I'm turning it on now. Father Nick, it's yours. Okay. Good morning. Glad you're with us on this fifth Sunday of Easter. We are continuing our online worship. If you'd like to follow along in the epistle, hopefully you've received that. That has our service booklet. If you go to our website, you can pull down today's bulletin that will give you the page numbers in the Book of Common Prayer, the hymns, and that'll be under the resources. Hopefully after we're going to be having the booklet itself uploaded to our website by next week but for now you have your book of common prayer and if you're watching this in all likelihood you know the service pretty well as it is so. with that our opening hymn is hymn 174 in our hymnal At the Lamb's high feast we sing Praise to our victorious King Who hath washed us in the tide Flowing from His pierced side Praise we Him whose love divine Gives His sacred blood for his body at the feast, Christ the victim, Christ the priest. Where the paschal blood is poured, death's dark angel sheathes his sword, Israel's host triumphant go through the Whose blood was shed, Paschal victim, Paschal bread, with sincerity and love, eat we manna from above. Mighty victim from on high, hell's fierce powers be. life and light. Now no more can death appall. Now the birth of grave in thrall. Thou hast opened paradise, and in thee thy saints shall rise. Easter triumph, Easter joy, Souls newborn, O Lord, in Thee. Hymns of glory, songs of praise. Father, unto Thee we raise. Risen Lord, all praise to Thee. With the Spirit ever. Our 
worship continues on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer or page one in your service booklet. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and wordly magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of Lord be with you. And, and also, also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whom truly to know is everlasting life, grant us so perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5, verses 55 through 60. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Stephen gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand, right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears, and with a loud shout, all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him, and the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and crowd out, cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. With this, when he had said this, he died. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for this, the fifth Sunday of Easter, is Psalm number 31, verses 1 through 5 and 15 through 16. It's found on page 622 of the Book of Common Prayer or on your own online leaflet. Please read with me. In you, O Lord, Lord, I have taken taken refuge. refuge. Let me never be put to shame. shame. Deliver me in your your righteousness. righteousness. Incline your your ear to me. Make haste to deliver me. Be Be my strong strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. For you you are my crag and my stronghold. stronghold. For For the the sake sake of your name, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that they have secretly set for me. For you you are are my my tower of strength. Into your your hands I commend commend my spirit. For you you have have redeemed me, O Lord, O God of truth. truth. My times times are in your hand. hand. Rescue Rescue me from from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servant and in your loving kindness save me. 
Glory Glory to to the the Father, and to the Son, and to the the Holy Spirit, Spirit, as it was was in the beginning, beginning, is now, and and will be forever. forever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of Peter. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourself be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of the darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do not know him you do know him and have seen him Philip said to him Lord show us the father and we will be satisfied Jesus said to him have I been with you all this time Philip and you still do not know me whoever has seen me has seen the father how can you say show us the father do you not believe that I am in the father and the father in me The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these because I am going to the Father. 
I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Christ. Thou art the life, the renting tomb proclaims thy conquering arm. And those who put their trust in thee, nor death nor hell shall harm. Thou art the way, the truth, the life, grant us that way to to keep that life to win whose joys eternal flow. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be always acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, you are our strength and our redeemer. July 13th, 1973, an inauspicious day, in the day one question became a domino effect for our nation. A simple question, maybe you remember it. It happened during the inquiries surrounding some burglaries at the Watergate Hotel. Donald Sanders asked Alexander Butterfield, Mr. Butterfield, are you aware of the installation of any listening devices in the Oval Office of the President? With some hesitation, Butterfield replied, Yes, sir. And so emerged the Watergate tapes. The bipartisan articles of impeachment for the President of the United States soon followed. Do you remember the television coverage? At a time without cable, video cassettes, DVDs, or online streaming, all the major networks canceled their normal programming. And for months, at least it seemed like months, they had the same program over and over. Watergate, Watergate, Watergate. I remember it all too well and see the picture of that video schedule still in my mind's eye. It was dreadful for children on summer vacation that year. We had hoped to watch TV. And so had the parents of those very energetic children. On August 9, 1974, President Richard Nixon resigned from the office. If that one question had not been asked, the legacy of Nixon might have been very different. One question. Sometimes asking questions causes problems. As suggested in the movie 2010, sometimes the answers are bigger than the questions. That's what I believe a lot of times happens when we ask God questions or ask for divine clarification. The answers take us deeper and deeper down that rabbit hole. It happened in our Gospel reading today. Jesus poetically pronounced, Let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, you may be also. And where I go you know, and the way you know. Jesus' words cast broad beams of beauty in the mind's eye. His words allow us to craft many wonderful interpretations. Like a seasoned batter would smile when he gets that slow underhand pitch. He knows what he'll do before his bat connects with that ball. Such words from Jesus wouldn't cause so much as a ripple to the hearers in the religiously diverse Roman world or our pluralistic society. Everyone could take those words home, 
make their own interpretation, and be fortified to allow others to make different interpretations. Feel good, laissez-faire theology. And Thomas ruined the moment. Like that impertinent uncle who just can't let sleeping dogs lie and rattles those skeletons in the closet during the Thanksgiving meal. Why won't he simply pass the mashed potatoes and talk about puppies and balloons? Likewise, Rather than rest in the splendor of Jesus' prose, Thomas not so gently asked for clarification. Jesus, what are you talking about? Jesus gave clarification without apologies. What looked like a slow moving pitch became a fast curveball in mid flight. It's easy to imagine that when Jesus said, Let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. He spoke with arms open wide. But when he answered Thomas's question, his arms went invert and fingers pointed to himself. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Listen to the audacity of what Jesus said. He did not say, I know the way. I will show you the way. Or more palpably, we can find a way together. Instead, he said that he himself stood as the only means to God. In case anyone had missed the import of his use of the definite article in saying the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus explicitly says that He is the only one. Who does He think He is to make such a statement? And what are we to make of it when we know and love nice people who do not accept Jesus as Lord? Some of these people seem to have better morals and take their religion more seriously than many Christians. Jesus' dynamic statement brings to mind the famous summary paragraph from C.S. Lewis's Mere Christianity. Lewis wrote, I am trying here to prevent anyone from saying the really foolish thing that people often say about him. They say, I'm ready to accept Jesus as a great moral teacher, but I don't accept his claim to be God. That is one thing we must not say. A man who is merely a man and said the sort of things that Jesus said would not be a great moral teacher. He would either be a lunatic on the level with a man who says he is a poached egg, or else he would be the devil of hell. You must make your choice. Either this man was and is the Son of God, or else a madman, or something worse. You can shut him up for a fool, you can spit at him and kill him as a demon, or you can fall at his feet and call him Lord and God. But let us not come with any patronizing nonsense about him being a great human teacher. He has not left that option open to us. He did not intend to. Lewis's Lord, liar, or lunatic argument has weight and finds itself in the toolbox of most evangelicals. It forces us to deal with the person of Jesus rather than heady theology or sentimental emotionalism. If Jesus was and is the person we say He is in the Nicene Creed, we'll say in a few moments, then we do not have the authority to assert that some of His words are true and then dismiss others as untrue or irrelevant. Some days, I wish I could do exactly that, though. I simply do not like some verses in the Bible. I'll bet you have some verses you don't like either. If we compare notes, we might even have some of the same verses. My dislike does not call into question the truth of the Scriptures. Neither does my dislike endorse ignoring some of the distasteful Scriptures. 
Of course, some people have overtly done exactly this. Thomas Jefferson edited out Bible verses he didn't like to make his own Bible. He called it the life and morals of Jesus of Nazareth. It's available still in hardcover or paperback. Prices start at $1.98 on Amazon with free shipping. Well, no, plus shipping and handling. But there's also a religious movement going on now called Building Your Own Theology. B-Y-O-T for short. Seminars and books are available. It's grown up to the level that the Bishop of Rome, also known as the Pope, has even addressed that movement by name. Of course, people have been building their own theology for a long time, and our era has a high percentage of those who have the hubris to state openly that they have the authority to define the nature of God. Now in creation, God made humans in image, His image, not the other way around. Unfortunately, a life with God is not like buying a car where we can designate which optional equipment we want and which we do not want and then haggle the price down to a, a number we can live with. Now, building your own theology has a correlative movement. It's that idea that all religions are basically the same. Steve Turner satirized this in his pithy statement called the creed. Turner said, we believe that all religions are basically the same. At least the one we read was. All believe in love and goodness. They only differ on matters of creation, sin, heaven, hell, God, and salvation. Put another way, superficially, all religious systems have similarities, like a basic moral code. But the fundamental levels of meaning, there they have substantial differences. The reasons why adherents do what they do and the character of the moral lawgiver have vast differences between religions. For example, on a visible level, all soldiers wear uniforms, carry weapons, and speak similar sounding patriotic words. Yet not all soldiers fight for the same country, the same reasons, or mean the same thing by the, saying such similar words. Now we understand that. Furthermore, Alistair McGrath uses simple logic to make the point that some religions, like Buddhism, are non-theistic. That is, they don't believe that God exists. And a religion can hardly lead to God if it explicitly denies the existence of a God or gods. In the end, be way out to religions and the idea that all religions are created equal are like holograms. They look real at first glance, but when pressed, they often lack substance. In other words, religions are superficially the same, but intrinsically different. Now, let's not go too far here. We are Episcopalians, you know. That does not mean that any religion other than Christianity lacks truth and only has a smoke and mirror spirituality. Mm -mm. We talked about that a bit in Bible study on Friday. The major religions of the world all contain aspects of truth. And as such, they have a level of stature that demands respect. We can appreciate their beauty, show respect, and be informed by other religions. Now at this point I could easily turn to Lewis's brilliant conclusion to the Chronicles of Narnia series, the book The Last Battle, but I'll go back to mere Christianity. A Christian does not have to believe that all the other religions are simply wrong. An atheist does have to believe that the main point of all the religions of the whole world is simply one huge mistake. 
As a Christian, you are free to think that all these religions, even the oddest ones, contain at least some hint of truth. When I was an atheist, I had to persuade myself that most of the human race have always been wrong about the one question that mattered to them most. When I became a Christian, I was able to take a more liberal view. Of course, being a Christian does mean thinking that where Christianity differs from other religions, their Christianity is right and they're wrong. This is like arithmetic. In addition and subtraction equations, there is only one right answer, and all other answers are wrong. But some wrong answers are much nearer being right than others. By the way, I love C.S. Lewis. You probably know that by now. And I keep a supply of his book, Mere Christianity, in my office. If you'd like a copy, let me know. But back to today's text. Jesus challenges the human tendency to create God in our own image. Jesus sets himself as the standard. Do you want to know what God looks like? Look at Jesus. That's why we pray for help in our colic today. Today's colic has been prayed by Anglicans since the very first book of common prayer in 1549. Now, it's been moved around to different feast days, but for almost 500 years, Anglicans have prayed, grant us so perfectly to know thy Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life that we may steadfastly follow in his steps in the way that leads to eternal life. That's never been easy. But it's always been true. Instead of viewing Jesus through our lens of what we think God is supposed to look like, why not allow Jesus to reshape our image of God? taking time on our knees to ask Jesus to reveal Himself to us. We may not realize that we have subconscious preconceptions until those strong situations confront us. Blindly blathering about how we trust in the goodness of God, and then a tragic or fearful event occurs, and we start doubting God. Put another way, I think we understand, if we think we understand God, then we do not understand God. We continually need faith to take us through the fire. Faith to hold the mystical hand of Jesus at times when we only dimly perceive Him. This is how it often is. After all, Do you notice that the Jesus we see in Scripture did not glow at night? Why not? He's the light of the world, isn't He? People seem to walk past Him without noticing Him. In many ways, Jesus was disconcertingly normal. Isn't that strange? Strange to me, but then again, I'm strange. It's strange to me that people didn't even notice that the one who spoke creation into existence was right there and they missed it. How could they miss God walking past them? Wouldn't He immediately turn heads, make people shiver, or something? Judging from the Scripture, People often casually went about their business while God, God walked past. Now, if they missed God in the flesh on a regular basis, that challenges me to consider that I miss God too. Jesus watched the feet of His disciples. Even the one who would betray him to death that very night. What standard does that set for those of us following the footsteps of Christ? Jesus blasted the religious elite, comparing them to snakes and mausoleums. He had no qualms about breaking their rules, overturning tables in the temple, 
He had an odd sense of liturgy and decorum. He's the good shepherd who doesn't extinguish the thinly burning wick. He's also the final judge who separates the sheep from the goats at the end of time. Sometimes when I read the Bible, it just doesn't make sense. I suspect that God made it that way. I suspect that because of the effect on my confusion. When I don't understand, I study more. And sometimes, sometimes I'm forced to speak with the author. That is, to pray. When we pray for answers, we come into the presence of God and build a friendship with the Master of the universe. We also know that God doesn't always give us the answers that we want. Sometimes we don't get any answers at all about our query. And maybe that's what's best for us anyway. God gives us guidance in the Scriptures and these do serve as a kind of map to follow. But that's not where it ends. He gives us Himself. Instead of simply saying, do this, don't do that. He says, follow Me. God didn't give us a succinct three-step plan for salvation. We don't say a secret password at the pearly gates. We meet a friend who is also our Lord. And He opens the door. God gave us a person. Himself. Jesus Christ. The one who knows us today and who will meet us at the end of days. A person, not a doctrine or a vision or a feeling. This changes how we approach discerning the truth and sharing our faith. Scripture supports giving a reasonable account for the hope that is within us. And I do enjoy debating and intellectual sparring. But that's not how Jesus or the early church converted those around Him. They lived humble lives of hope and patience in a prideful world filled with fear and anxiety. And that caused people to stand up and take notice. Then the Christians invited those on the outside into a relationship with Jesus and the people of God. A friendship with God and His people transforms life for the better. I have yet to meet a person who has been argued or mocked into having a loving relationship with Jesus. When we approach others with a personal testimony of Jesus' work in our lives, we provoke less tension and convince more readily requires less strategizing and more importantly expresses the essence of Christianity more clearly. We give an invitation into a relationship with Jesus. Christianity has true doctrines like the Nicene Creed, but these doctrines are waypoints and out-of-bounds markers. These Markers are not to be confused with the way, the truth, or the life. The way, the truth, and the life has a name. His name is Jesus. That's who we seek, whether we know it or not. We have been created for an intimate relationship with God. To know Him. To love Him. To follow Him. Jesus came to make that possible. To grow in our relationship with God today. His gracious hand will lead us. In the end, we will see Him face to face.
Let's pray using the words of today's collect. Almighty God, whom truly to know is everlasting life, grant us so perfectly to know Your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow His steps in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, Your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us stand and say we believe using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through Him all things are made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life in the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are found on page 359 in the Book of Common Prayer or in your service leaflet. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church that we we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your your name name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons that that they they may may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That, that there, there may, may be justice, justice and peace on the earth. earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That, that, that our, our works, works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That, that they, they may, may be delivered, delivered from, from their distress. distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let, Let light, light perpetual shine, shine upon them. them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Lord, send us a cure for this virus. Lift up your children. Heal our economy. O Lord, our God, Accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Humbly kneeling, let's confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, We confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, 
keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also, also with you. Good morning. Again, I'm glad you all are here. And happy Mother's Day to our mothers present and those online. We will be having a blessing of the mothers as we normally do on Mother's Day after the post communion prayer before the general blessing. In our community, things are opening up. May 8th on Friday, we we're able to get haircuts. I didn't get one yet. Yeah, I'm debating going back to the days when I used to ride a motorcycle and had a ponytail to keep the flies out of my face. But we're, even though we're still ramping up, please continue to give people calls. Stay connected. You know, I'm trying to do every, every week three, at least three calls to three people that I haven't, seen, haven't talked with in three weeks. It's a good thing to do. We're going to be continuing streaming worship. Um, Brian, until really further notice, and we're going to be continuing to stream even after we have people starting to come in because I know some people are not going to be able to return immediately. Now, next week, some things are going to be a little different, and we're preparing for it this week where I'm going to be consecrating extra hosts because what I'm going to be doing is delivering those hosts to people through a, at probably starting Wednesday-ish who would like to receive the communion, and this will be bread only, and it's a non-contact way of, of getting it to you, so I'll either put it in your mailbox, put it on your doorstep. Somehow we'll coordinate that, and I'll let you know. But you've got to let me know. Right now, five families or five households have, have let me know that they would like to receive, and I'll begin doing those deliveries. So let me know that you, you would like it, how many, and how often. Probably going to be, elite. of course, I'll be making weekly rounds. And if you want to be on the weekly circuit, as it were, I'll do my Methodist impersonation of a circuit. And then during the communion service on the 17th, at the time when I receive communion, that's the time that you would receive that, you would consume that. And know that lots of other people from St. Paul's are going to be doing the same thing. Yep, it'll, it's going to be consecrated, and I'll be consecrating extra each week so that we can do that. Now, because we're going to be uh, consecrating some for the people here as, as last week, uh, that we'll be receiving at the, immediately following the service, give me a few minutes to, before I start the Zoom uh, coffee hour, that we'll, and it'll be good. The bulletins are online. If you're ever wondering, now, what hymn was that? Well, the bulletins are online, so go ahead and, and check it out. The parish office is remaining closed, and it looked, I'm, well, I'm not sure when we're going to be opening it back up. Probably the trigger point will be when the Dyson office opens up, or you know, it could be something else. But that, that would be a, a pretty clear trigger there. And... We've get, we put in our application for government forgivable loans, and I'm happy to report that both the school and the church did receive those. Thank you to Jennifer Fonts and to Bill Ralston for working those things through. Our prayer meetings, our regular meetings, and our Bible studies are going on via Zoom, as is normally the case. That Zoom meeting number is 903 777 2020. That's 903-777-2020. I feel like an announcer when I say it like that. And I think that's all I have, but I know we have some exciting news from the junior warden. We may even have, so I'll let him. Thank you. Uh, the Junior Warden Division sends you greetings this morning. Thank greetings. You. 
Just wanted to let you know that we have now received the new riding lawnmower that uh, those who were kind enough to contribute to the cause, we did receive it. We went and got it yesterday. Dr. Blyer and myself went and uh, purchased the unit and it's here. And we hope to give you a picture of it uh, in the next epistle. It's a very nice unit. The older unit was sold to a parishioner who wanted it. And so that's been taken care of. So uh, thank you very much to those who contributed to the uh, change out or the purchase of the new lawnmower. It is a commercial quality unit and it's going to last us a very long time. Uh, it's one of the top models that John Deere uh, has. So we're very happy to have it and uh, thank you. Great. Thank you. Look forward to seeing Sam driving his new hot rod, the X350. On our, on our property. It's a good looking lawnmower. And other announcements? I think we have one, but you're going to need a, you need the mic. Okay. There are a couple other ones that the mother should have received an e-card. It went out, is that correct? Or it's going out? It has gone out. And so you should be receiving one. And with a, a note from me, and we're going to be continuing our regular schedule for noonday prayer. It was via Zoom on Wednesdays. Our Bible study, we're on Philippians 4. Probably we may be finishing it up this week, and that'll be at 8 o'clock on Fridays. Bible and breakfast without the breakfast. So that's all I got. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and a sacrifice to God. things come of thee, O Lord. And of thine own have, have we given, given thee. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. To your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. To your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be, be God, God forever. forever. The Lord be with you. 
and also with you. Lift up your heart. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give the thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rise into life he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, join our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and became subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. And the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. Christ, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. At the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. O Lamb of God, the 
Thou takest away the sins of the world. Have, Have mercy, mercy upon us. us. O Lamb of God, Thou takest away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, Thou takest away the sins of the world. Grant us thy peace. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Could the mothers please stand? Loving God, as a mother gives life and nourishment to her children, so you watch over your church. Bless these women that they may be strengthened as Christian mothers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor them always with a spirit of profound respect. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be upon you and remain with you. Always. Amen. Amen. Jesus lives, thy terrors now can no longer death We know the whole grave can not enthrall us. Alleluia. Yeah. Jesus lives for us, he died. They belong to Jesus living. Pure in heart may we. Jesus 
Let us go forth to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.